breaking news and weather authority. This is News Center 16 at 11. Good evening, I'm Gabby Gonzalez. Here are tonight's top stories. Under arrest, a murder suspect is found in the trunk of a car in Benton Township. We'll bring you a live report. An early morning argument ends in gunfire. What police say may have played a role in this Elkhart shooting. In local ties, the turbulent week in Boston hits close to home for South Bend's new police chief. Hear his reaction to the suspect's capture. But first, the search for a murder suspect police described as armed and dangerous ended just hours ago in Benton Township. Now, this all started yesterday when police found 24-year-old Tanita Broyles shot to death in the 600 block of Madison Street in Benton Harbor. 21-year-old Isaiah Kasnov is accused of pulling the trigger but fled the scene before officers arrived. A warrant was issued for his arrest and tips led public safety officers to both a house in Kalamazoo and an apartment in Benton Township in search of him, but they came back empty-handed. Now, that all changed this evening. New Center 16's Christine Carson is live at the scene where police were finally able to locate him. So yeah, well, here's the latest around 730 officials took Isaiah Castaneda into custody. He did surrender when they cornered him. They cornered him on the corner of Red Arrow Highway and Euclid, which is about where we are right now. Um, he was supposedly found in the trunk of the car. That's what officials are telling me. Um, witnesses are telling me that that car was supposedly a green Malibu. Um, supposedly a woman was driving it. That's not confirmed. That's just what witnesses are telling me. The officers also took a loaded semi-auto handgun. Now they did say that they don't know if that was used in the incident that happened the other morning. That's what we were talking to you, telling you about the other day. So that's not confirmed. We don't know if that was the same weapon used. He was taken into Berrien County Jail where he was arraigned for the charge of murder. Now I was talking to a couple witnesses out here today. The ones that are living right across the street right over here tell us that the officials told them to evacuate their homes because it wasn't a safe situation earlier today. Others are telling me we're looking at about um, 50 or so people who are around the scene. So a very crowded, congested area with all these officials, but some are just happy it's over with. It doesn't really make me worried because it didn't actually happen like in this area. It happened further away. But it does kind of scare me at the fact that he was around our neighborhood. So it makes me wonder who he knows here and, you know, stuff like that. But he's caught, so I feel better. <laughs> Now, as you can see, we're still out here. The crime scene is still kind of open. You know, they cut the tape down. It's still laying on the ground here. We're obviously going to keep you updated with the latest, and we're going to follow this story and continue to bring you the latest on what's coming out here in Benton Harbor. Reporting live from Benton Harbor, Christine Kirsten. Gabby, back to you. All right, Christine, thanks so much. Good to know that they've now captured this man who was really uh, worrying a lot of residents there. Thanks so much. Well, about two and a half miles west of that scene, crews were busy battling a fire that badly damaged a Benton Harbor home. The blaze broke out around 930 in the 500 block of North Wynan Street. Firefighters arrived to find uh, flames shooting through the roof and heavy smoke pouring out. Everyone escaped safely and thankfully no one was hurt. Crews were able to put out the fire rather quickly, but remained on the scene, making sure there were no hot spots. Investigators are still trying to determine what sparked the blaze. One man is dead and another is behind bars after a disagreement took a violent turn overnight in Elkhart. 26 year old J Terry Sheets Jr. was arrested for murder after police say he fatally shot 24 year old Matthew Bark. It happened around 1:30 this morning at the Deer Creek Apartments in the 2600 block of Toledo Road. Now that's on the city's east side. Police say the two men had been drinking when an argument broke out. The dispute escalated and shots were fired inside one of the units at the complex. Bark was taken to Memorial Hospital where he later died from his in injuries. Sheets Jr. is being currently held at the Elkhart County Correction Center. Well, turning now to weather, it was a sunny but very chilly spring day, huh, Chuck? All right, thanks, Chuck. Well, there's an overwhelming sense of relief tonight in Boston as the city begins to get back to the way things were before the terror attack and massive manhunt for the men federal agents say we're responsible. There's heavy security tonight at Beth Israel Hospital where marathon bombing suspect Jahar Sarnev is being treated for multiple wounds. After two intense gun battles with police, the final standoff ended after a tip from a homeowner that led agents to this boat in his backyard. 
thermal images from police uh, helicopters show the suspect was alive and hiding inside. Authorities say the 19 year old suspect could be charged with terrorism and murder and questioned by the FBI's elite high value suspect interrogation team. And for one of the leaders in our own community, the images coming from Boston are those of former colleagues, friends and neighbors. South and Police Chief Ron Teachman is from the Boston area and spoke to News Center 16 about what it's been like to be far away from a place he used to call home during a time that's put both residents and law enforcement to the test. We're so grateful to bring justice and a closure to this case. Around the nation, people were glued to their televisions as officials confirmed that the second suspect in the Boston explosions had been caught. But for South Bend Police Chief Ron Teachman, the faces on the screen, those on the front lines of a manhunt, were far too familiar. These are folks that I met with at least monthly, went to conventions together, worked together, uh, and they were friends. Part of me wanted to be there, you know, part of me wanted to uh, rush to help. Teachman says his phone started ringing Monday, with word of the explosions, some of his own falling victim to the violence. And then I had friends who were hurt, uh, members of the police department, some of their family members were at the scene, were injured, friends who had run the race from the track club that I belonged to back in New Bedford. And it was in his own town, New Bedford, that the investigation continued to unfold. They executed a search warrant in my hometown of New Bedford where three people taken into custody. So this case has had a very local impact. So when Joe Harsarnayev was taken into custody, this police chief breathed a sigh of relief. Well, I was certainly proud for the home team, chasing the leads tirelessly. Uh, I'm sure it was exhausting uh, to go, I'm sure they're going without sleep. You just can't rest when you've got this threat in your community.